Our guest will be Tomasz Widomski. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The last six months we were surprised by the media about uh, uh, jamming, GPS jamming. Uh, jamming is just interference with uh, reception signal. Sometimes it even eliminates the signal. Uh, every week uh, we get an information that uh, the air traffic was uh, interfered by jamming. Uh, I would like to tell about different consequences of jamming and proofing. I will be talking about advanced IT technologies uh, that are time coordinated. As the, this is a quite old type of, uh, of knowledge. Uh, the first works on synchronization IT and OT uh, appeared in 1983. It was initiated by the U.S. Armed Forces. Uh, so when there is a satellite communication for, for guiding missiles. So there was the questions were raised: What happens if we interfere, interfere with the system, with the tamper with the system? Uh, and for a specific period of time, it will not be usable. During the Persian Gulf War, there was an incident that took lives of several soldiers uh, in because of the overload, numeric overload of a processor cell that is responsible for representing time. What does it mean? We are talking about representing numerical representation of time. So it's not about the clocks that inform us what time it is. We are talking about time lapse, lapsed. So it's the fourth dimension of uh, the place where we exist. And we are talking about destabilization of the whole critical uh, infrastructure that is based on the information on the time and the flow of time uh, that organized through GNSS. Uh, the example that uh, raises uh, uh, fears among specialists is that uh, the way that we make optimum distribution of energy. Since we have been popularizing for two years with the uh, National Metrology Authority and the uh, Technical Mi Military Technical Academy how to uh, deal with desynchronization uh, and how it is used to uh, uh, limit the work parameters of IT systems. It is all. It all only refers to to peripheral uh, devices, uh, but uh, a unique uh, disk matrix control in the cloud is using synchronization at the onset of the system. So interference with the system may can may prevent. Uh, a server or, or the whole server room from operating properly, or it may endanger the whole network of server rooms, or make uh, the server rooms an element of peripheral architecture. So you know, uh, instead of coordinating they work with you know, like um, railway networks, they do it uh, based on time coordination. So the good news is that the subject that before the uh, war in Ukraine was not really known or uh, because Poland does not uh, produce uh, much IT equipment. We consuming 
software or creating software, but uh, the problems that we are dealing with here is about the hardware. The hardware that is based on systemic uh, software. So the operation system are uh, unified with the hardware. So this is the subject of books by uh, Military Technical University, uh, published by Military Technical University. So distribution of time and, uh, and we will it will be re-edited, uh, the, the extended version, uh, in order to uh, aid reconnaissance of satellite threats. Uh, how come that something that it does not explode may destroy the whole critical infrastructure? It is dependence on GPS of many solutions that causes the problem. Uh, so. I will tell, use the uh, example of railway network. And, and so this is our uh, like car navigation, or but the number of uh, equipment, of hardware and controllers that use it is is beyond our uh, possibility of digesting it, and the revolution. Break the revolution is the period where we live in. The systems that were independent before are now interdependent, so they form a domino blocks that may cause the total destruction when you start it. Poland signaled many years ago that those dangers are present and uh, the financial market were the first that were mm, uh, okay. so sometimes uh, the, the purchases uh, that are made on the stock market uh, uh, you see it in the sector table so uh, those of you that are interested in the uh, EU directive. I well, the table is uh, from the uh, European Space Agency. I uh, got it from the Prague branch office, and is the about the precision of the synchronization for the peripheral systems. It doesn't mean that uh, when you exceed this parameter that there is a. a uh, and the fail. Uh, sometimes it, it takes more time. Uh, so if uh, the time should be considered a cyber uh, weapon, uh, it is not that you can cause dangerous effect w when you change uh, a digit. So the attacks uh, that we uh, are uh, subject to may may be in place for a long time now. GPS pojawiła się w Azji. These problems, uh, I would say that the problem of of jamming and interference started to appear in the region between uh, Russia and Korea. China. These were the first cases of GPS interference. It uh, came to Europe through the Persian Gulf uh, in the region of Turkey. In, in Europe, Norway felt it uh, as the first country. We have very strong interferences in our region, but not as strong as to uh, as to make your cell phones uh, unusable. Of course, there is no guarantee that it's going to remain this way. Now, what can we? compare the synchronization to? Uh, I guess we can compare it to a regular heartbeat. Uh, this uh, arrhythmia of the heart, this shows how we should, the slide shows how we should treat it. If we have a small degree of arrhythmia, the, the synchronization, we can say the infrastructure is inefficient, perhaps certain parameters were fall, the speed of transmission, radio transmission, also logical. Uh, band, uh, also, I'm talking about bands and, and fiber optics. Perhaps uh, 
service clusters whose operational capability was uh, designed for a specific number of uh, service processors will lower the uh, compute computational capability because of uh, asynchronicity. I also warn those who have really trusted uh, very strong archival uh, systems, uh, especially large banking systems, database systems. In such systems, the data is fundamental because these systems have to archive everything during night. If one of the clusters doesn't uh, end archiving the backup, perhaps uh, these backups will be incomplete. And of course, nothing will happen at that time, only the next day when there will be a breakdown which will require recreating the data. The data will not be there or it will be incomplete. Uh, the topic uh, we are dealing with is much wider than what you actually encounter in the media. In the mass media, we analyze, we we think about cyber attacks called time synchronization attack, uh, starting from the from the time of creating time, and we are talking about let's say GPS time, which was created a bit before in U.S. naval. Uh, a laboratory in case of the Chinese satellite system is the Chinese meteorology that's responsible for the time, same uh, when it comes to the Russian system, but in case of the European system, there is a few labs which create the, the time scale of Galileo. Poland also has its own two time scales which are registered at IBPN. We have in the room the representative of that a governmental agency who can uh, tell you about the role of that during the break, perhaps. What's important, however, uh, what we should remember is that the national time scales do not depend on satellite systems. They, they constitute uh, great alternative uh, time sources for uh, uh, IT systems. For example, when there is a GPS over Poland, it will be totally turned off or totally interfered with, uh, totally jumped. Uh, since December 10th, uh, by a coincidence, I suppose, uh, it turns out we have we have a system in Poland called ECHAS-PL, e -time PL. It is uh, registered in the in the main governmental agency. Everybody can use that system. That system was started uh, on the 20th anniversary of the act on official time. Poland was one of the first country to um, regulate. Uh, the definition of official time. Unfortunately, we didn't quite have the executive regulations and technical capabilities of distributing that time. Uh, so the project ECHAS uh, allows uh, to join in those critical infrastructure which are isolated from the internet. They can draw the signal from the agency. A uh, certain innovation in relation to American uh, or British solutions is the fact that the uh, the agency, the central agency, can also monitor remotely uh, the time settings on remote servers. Of course, uh, we can't talk about alternative solutions uh, without realizing of whether we are under attack and whether the attack, and how intensive is the attack. That's why I'd like to tell you that we do have Polish solutions which can monitor. The signal quality, there is a few of them. We have a stationary solutions, which is proposed by El Proma. It's called Argos. There is also a solution created by the Institute of Communications. It's a mobile solution, which also offers the possibility of jamming signals. But uh, you will hear more about it uh, from the authors of the system. The Argos system is a dense mapping system. Uh, in other words, it can be placed on telecommunications, BTSs, uh, in meteorological data points. Uh, and it will show the quality of signal in, in any location. Of course, the interference will have uh, impact on the quality of the signal. But we're also interested in, in a number of other phenomena which affect the interference of very weak signals which come to the Earth, which come from satellites which are 20,000 kilometers over our head. Uh, there is a very weak reception here, even though the, the signals are very, very evenly distributed. Uh, last slide, uh, we've received an award from the hands of the minister during uh, a meeting of the, of the PW Cyber Group in Katowice. Uh, it's the Argo cell system which monitors interference, uh, which detects them and alarms in real time about jamming, about GPS spoofing. Uh, 
Oh, during that meeting, it was underlined that it appeared at the right time and place. Uh, it's quite rare that we can, uh, kind of on an ongoing basis, preventively enter the market. It's an open architecture system. What does it mean? Well, it means that uh, right here from the stage, I'd like to uh, invite everybody interested in cooperation uh, to work on developing the system. We're talking about the systems which measures, monitors, and alarms about the signals in real time, but can't really tell you much about trends. In other words, about predictability of what might happen in a, in a, in a minute. Is that possible uh, at all? Well, here AI comes in. Uh, and the issues of uh, having deeper understanding of, of physics, of microwaves, their dependability on uh, various phenomena. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Tomasz. Uh, I would like to invite you to take part in a short conversation we will have. Uh, perhaps there are some questions. Uh, I can see there is one. I was asking whether the sources of time, American, British, uh, etc., European, do they synchronize each other and whether this synchronization can be attacked? Well, each laboratory, as I've said, develops its own time, uh, so it's asynchronous. But of course, uh, there is a place which coordinates their work. It's the French BPN in Sevres and near Paris. Uh, near Paris uh, all these uh, laboratories uh, send data from the atomic clocks uh, to that place. Uh, this is where corrections are prepared, which in fact uh, define what sort of corrections should be made in the future to receive concrete parameters of the time scale. I'm not sure if I um, hmm, if I've answered uh, your questions. There is no direct connections. Such experiments only take place in Europe because in Europe we have a lot of fiber optics. Uh, we have good fiber optic infrastructure. And here I have to congratulate uh, my colleagues from Big Time, with whom we create consortium. We have instruments which allow us to join these uh, atomic clocks directly and compare. Uh, before we had these techniques of uh, direct comparison, the only techniques of comparison, of, uh, indirect, of direct comparison, was the satellite systems, such methods as common view, the methods of shared observation of receiving a signal from a single or a group of satellites, a single satellite or a group of satellites. So it's not that these labs are sort of interconnected strongly. However, if some laboratory is starting to kind of float off, as we as we like to call it, it's, its scale is going off the charts, then VPN uh, sends a warning and um, and calls for corrections. Uh, and such events do take place. I'm not sure if you remember to 2019, we have an incident connected uh, with um, the problem note as uh, GPS week number all over. Perhaps nothing happened on our clocks, uh, but there were some places that time increased, not by second, but by 19 years. And that was a huge problem. Uh, when you're fighting for nanopeak or femtoseconds, so then, of course, uh, meteorological institutions were the first victim of all of that, but they did handle it uh, quite well, rather quickly. Thank you very much, Tomas. Thank you. I'm not sure if you remember the year 2000 and Y2K. The, the threats uh, connected with it, uh, no problems appeared, but I do have a feeling that these issues that Tomasz has been telling about is the scenario, somewhat connected with that scenario. And today, thanks to Tomasz, we are somewhat more aware, we understand the additional source of threat. And now uh, we'll hear about the possibilities of using a uh, system Yashmin as a sophisticated system of crisis management. 